Hey, good afternoon. Uh, this is Zartan from Amok Dot, and this is a video that is hopefully going to assist uh, some fellow corp mates, friends, and interested parties in approaching planetary interaction and how to set up factories for high yield production and uh, make doing that easy as well as manageable. Uh, now, the, the purpose of this video is to outline uh, details about how to best set up a planetary interaction factory for creating uh, P1 or, uh, or T1 Tier 1 materials. And uh, I'm outside our uh, Fortizar structure at the moment, just in a uh, Aeneris. Uh, cargo ship, and I have um, a temperate uh, planetary command center in my cargo hold. That is a necessary step. So you can see I can select a temperate command center, and I've done a couple of these today already. But uh, I thought maybe you know make make a video because it's going to help some other people try and set this up. Um, now, um, when approaching what you want to make, you know there's always um, deciding that and some planets are better for some resources than others and you know in this case um, there's a couple different resources that I was I was looking at uh, possibly harvesting on this character on on a planet that I have available to build and in this case I decided on making uh, bacteria on this planet by harvesting microorganisms and as you can see, uh, this planet, when it's open in planet view, has a bunch of different areas on the planet where it may be good to set up a factory uh, to harvest raw materials, turn it into bacteria by processing it with uh, basic processors. Basic processors turn the raw material into P1, like... Um, noble metals into precious metals, uh, microorganisms into bacteria, and so on. And, you know, as you can see, you can get bacteria on several different planets. But, uh, you know, if I looked at a barren planet, it may not be as optimal for setting up a factory on a barren planet as opposed to, say, a temperate planet. Um, and the, the type of resource you get and choosing that planet should really be dictated on according to what you want to build as your your end product whether that's a p2 product p3 or p4 and you know how many characters you have uh, how many planet slots you have available on a character as the most you can use on a character is six but uh, typically most characters will have uh, the ability to use five planets and reason being for that largely is that uh, training to use that sixth, sixth planet takes about uh, 14 to 17 days and you know that's uh, quite a chunk of skill training time out of your uh, out of your your year so you know again choose choose what's most optimal according to the planet like I might be able to do this on an ice planet but this uh, system that I'm in doesn't have any ice planets and you know I could go to a system that has an ice planet but uh, again to making convenient and manageable being the end goal um, trying to work with what you have available in the system that you live in in EU Online does make it manageable so in this system I've got one two three temperate planets I've got uh, three barren one oceanic and a gas planet and, you know, I, I could uh, use any of the temperate planets for microorganisms. So we've, we've looked at planet three, but let's, let's look at the other ones just to see how choosing, you know, a different temperate planet can actually affect the differences. So microorganisms, your, um, your hot spots uh, on a planet two can affect, uh, and choosing a hot spot where you know your uh, resource is most abundant 
uh, in doing that by using the scan feature in the planetary interaction view what you can do is you can you can uh, set the uh, maximum visible resource and minimum visible resource limits and typically the most ideal thing is to set the minimum resource visible limit all the way to the right and then drag the whole bar just a little bit over closer to the middle and you'll get uh, you know a view that displays um, abundant resource locations and uh, in this case there's very few of them on this planet that are good for microorganisms um, there are several several of them but uh, one thing that you want to try and look for is uh, an, an area um, where the resources are abundant but will uh, also provide multiple abundant resources uh, of the same type so uh, one example would be like this if we go and we look at uh, carbon compounds um, carbon compounds we have to adjust the limits and just as an example of say a good location um, this would be one one ideal example where you know you could put uh, your extractor and processing factory right in the middle of this area and uh, your extractor uh, your extraction control unit could reach multiple of these resources within the range that it can reach so that if uh, one of these resource nodes depletes which they tend to do and respawns then you can uh, use a different available um, resource concentration location within the area without destroying and rebuilding and moving your factory on the planet uh, which is kind of annoying to do so picking picking a good location can have many benefits um, or aqueous liquids which turns into water so these are is a very abundant resource on temperate planets and oceanic planets <clears throat> and uh, looking at this planet for a really good location for say an aqueous liquids factory this would be one that would be, would be very ideal because you could put your factory and extractor unit right in the middle of this uh, batch of resource nodes and you've got um, a nice circular concentration within reach of all of your uh, within the range of your extractor control unit so that if you deplete a resource you can still uh, continually uh, harvest nearby available resources without destroying and moving your factory so <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna have a sip of my my drink uh, now um, since we're gonna do microorganisms let's have a look at this this other planet the uh, planet 7 temperate to see what is available for uh, microorganisms so this this area here while it, it's got a really good concentration it, it's not typically very ideal like it's got a low low concentration and really high concentration so if you uh, set up your extractor control unit and heavily focus on this area you could be left with uh, depleted and diminished resource amounts on the other uh, lesser concentrated areas <coughs> and uh, this could be a good spot a good spot here um, or or this this would be really good because you've got two heavy concentrated resource nodes for uh, microorganisms and you could place a factory between this uh, and probably not have to be too overly concerned with uh, depleting one resource node or or either of them uh, to the point where your factory would be negatively affected so now one other thing to consider too is that there are more than likely other players uh, trying to harvest these resources on the same planet that you may be and uh, astroturfing 
uh, somebody else's factories can diminish the amount of resources that everybody collectively gets or you get from a resource node. So if uh, you know another member of my group or another player had a factory set up here and I set up right next to it and I started harvesting that same resource node, um, the yield that would be gained from uh, harvesting the resource node potentially would be negatively affected for everybody that was doing the same activity for the same resource. So that's uh, something you want to try and avoid doing by uh, looking at the planet and you want to click show other characters networks. Um, now some of these planets that we have available in the system that we typically live in aren't very heavily used but here's a couple examples. So here's uh, one person has this factory here, another person has a factory here and you know they could be harvesting any of these resources but they probably aren't so these two people having uh, factories that are apparently appear to be harvesting the same resource within the same area are potentially negatively affecting the the productivity efficiency of uh, harvesting resources in that same general area on the same planet and depending on how many people are doing it with the same resource you know will will affect that uh, more uh, drastically uh, two people doing it on the same planet at the same resource node probably not quite as much to uh, to an extensive amount but it'll still have uh, you know it'll still penalize you for doing that if you do so I'm going to try and avoid this because I'm, I'm definitely uh, going to end up harvesting the same resources that they do. And uh, I think I'm going to set up right here. This is the one we looked at earlier. It was uh, a really good spot for a microorganisms factory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop my command center. And um, my factory tends to be a vertical design from top to bottom. So I'm going to put my command center uh, just above the area where I want my factory to be. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what we want to do is click on our command center and want to upgrade it. And this will provide more uh, power and CPU resources by a significant amount to level five. It'll cost uh, 4.2 million isk and change and I have 8 million, almost 9 million isk, so that should be just enough to get the job done. There. And now I'm pouring it. And I might have to give my this character some isk to finish this video and finish this factory setup. So now what I want to do is get my extractor control unit. And um, I'm going to pick an advantageous spot that will cover probably the most amount of resource nodes in this general area and this looks good like right here because we'll catch the the edge of this pretty much the edge of the whole area and um, another thing to mention too is that your command center uh, in no way needs to be linked to your factory what's in, in any way whatsoever using a planetary link uh, that's completely unnecessary. So you can save uh, yourself fitting resources by not requiring a link between so your extractor uh, or any of the other structures and your command center. Uh, it is optional to use your command center if it's a benefit as a routing waypoint between, say, an extractor and some of your other structures. But it's certainly unnecessary, and doing that will be... Um, uh, of, of no benefit whatsoever. So we've got we've got our extractor and our extractor is really not doing anything yet. But uh, you know you have to build uh, the extractor before it can actually build anything uh, or extract anything and, and so on. And uh, you know we want to build the rest of the factory before we really start doing that. And you might be thinking well the extractor needs to go into a storage. But um, since we're only producing 
uh, P1 level materials, or in this case, it'll be bacteria. And, uh, you know, we uh, are using a planet that has a fairly low radius. Um, even, even with that in mind, uh, using these storage facilities uh, provides negative benefits um, over using spaceports. Because if you use spaceports, then you have the ability to export uh, materials from any one of your storage facilities to the Planetary uh, Customs Office that's out in space. And uh, you can't do that with a storage. So if you overfill one of your storages, or you're unable to empty a storage, uh, you can do expedited transfers of um, unprocessed or processed materials between the launch pads and the customs office. However, if you use uh, storage facilities, storage facilities cannot export to a customs office. And the fitting resources required for um, for spaceports or planetary launch pads right requires 3600 CPU and 700 power right but uh, a storage facility uses 700 power and 500 CPU so the CPU usage for a uh, planetary launch pad or spaceport is significantly higher than um, a storage facility, but you know it, it lacks the benefit to be able to be really useful um, for anything that intermediary storage, um, and you know you only gain. Uh, 2,000 meters cubed of extra storage over, I think it is 2,000, um, over a launch pad. Yeah, it's 2,000 more. So, you know, the uh, the utility gained is worth the extra CPU usage. It really, really is. Um, so we've got our three launch pads. And the idea here is that we're going to uh, export our materials the exported materials are going to go into the first launch pad and uh, let's let's build our processors and since we're building uh, or manufacturing harvesting uh, microorganisms making material bacteria we want to use basic industry facilities or basic processors to make uh, bacteria so we're going to use eight of them for this planet because the uh, the fitting resources uh, really permit making that optimal. Uh, beyond eight is really difficult to do for most characters, and uh, you typically need really high skills uh, in uh, command center upgrades, like maximum to get uh, 10 processors on one planet. And uh, usually with 10 processors, uh, the amount of raw material that can be processed is more than what many planets are able to provide through using just one extractor. And uh, using multiple extractors really hurts your yield uh, by requiring uh, such high fitting resources. So the amount of fitting resources for a uh, planetary extractor is quite significant so it's you know 550 power and 400 CPU or no pardon me it's it's 2600 power and you know you only have um, 17 17,000 power available with uh, level 5 upgrades on the command center so you know that's uh, um, really something to consider is that you're, you have to really conserve on your power to get the, uh, the harvesting yield because once the command or extractor control unit 
is set up. Each one of the extraction heads uses a considerable amount of power and uh, using CPU, more, more CPU to set up your factory as opposed to more power will allow you to use the maximum amount of available extraction heads. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll just add the last two uh, basic processors. And what we want to do here is try and keep the, uh, the processors as close as possible to, to the edge of the next available or nearest processor. Um, so that the links between the structures are short because um, let's say if I, I create a link right and I try to link these two together that distance on the planet is 414 kilometers but that link <clears throat> it also uses 98 CPU and 73 power um, and the longer that link is you know the worse that's going to get. If I try to make a link all the way across the planet, I'm going to use a thousand CPU and like, you know, 700 power for a 5,000 kilometer link, which is really just wasting your fitting resources for no benefit. And uh, that's something you can get into at a later time, right? Is that if you uh, focus your factory in one location for one purpose, you can avoid making those long links and that will increase your productivity yield and the amount of product that you're able to manufacture or process and uh, the one exception to where you will need either a longer link or what you can do is you can also create upgraded links and what an upgraded link does is allows you to increase the amount of um, resources you can transit across a link between structures, right? So if I wanted to um, upgrade a link, I'd click upgrade, and now it's upgraded as soon as I click submit. So it's got a maximum capacity now of 2,500 M3 per hour, right? And you can you can go all the way up to higher levels, but you know there's 5,000. You know, every every one you do adds power. There's ten thousand. I think it'll go all the way up to like level five. There's twenty thousand. Uh, that's forty thousand. Upgrade level. That's eighty thousand. You know, and it gets gets pretty ridiculous. Um, the uh, current amount of power and CPU used right is 1125 CPU which is pretty ridiculous so keeping keeping your link short and not having to use upgraded links is extremely beneficial very very beneficial um, but even even sometimes you have to upgrade a short link um, and with the amount of resources that are available on planets that are in uh, null sec space in EVE Online uh, typically anything over uh, 2 million units of a resource uh, harvested over two days will require you to upgrade a link. And that's pretty common that that'll have to happen. And uh, usually no more than upgrading a link once from 1250 to, to 2500 per hour will be necessary for this factory. Uh, there may be some planets you might not have to do that on because it can't produce more than 2 million units harvested over two days. But, uh, you know, that's only if they're unable to produce that. You can avoid needing to make that link, uh, an upgraded link. And all the other links on this factory are not upgraded. Um, they don't need to be only the link between the uh, extractor control unit and the first uh, spaceport needs to be upgraded. All of the rest of them have more than adequate capacity to accommodate uh, processing and routing all of the resources. So um, we're just going to link all these together. You only need one link between each structure. Um, any structure that's linked to any other structure can route to any other structure. 
which um, you know some people might think oh I need to make a link from um, this launch pad to this processor to be able to empty it directly but that's not necessary this this processor when it's set up will uh, export its process materials through this processor through this launch pad and into this launch pad right and, and uh, a key thing to mention too is that um, the maximum logistical limit uh, per planetary interaction factories is five five hops or five links right so if if I made a, a spaceport here and then I put um, one processor two processors hopefully this will fit three four five Oop. somebody's jumping out uh, that is an unavoidable sound and then I try to put a launch pad here right you know I can I can link all these together I can make the links but one two three four five you know I could route uh, a resource from from this uh, processor if I was making bacteria right but if I had another processor between this and the storage, I couldn't create a link that way because it exceeds the maximum logistical limit. So that is another another important consideration is uh, geometry. Geometry with setting these up has many benefits uh, for making optimal factory designs. And because of the logistical limit that is the primary reason right so you know none of these links even between uh, between the storage and any of the processors exceeds uh, five logistical hops right so like one two three or this one one two three four and typically the way that I, I, I set this up is that uh, you know you have one input two outputs because you have eight uh, processors uh, but if you take all eight of your processors and route them into uh, one export storage, it will overfill that storage in a day. Uh, and when the storage is overfilled, that storage does not, um, you know, stop the processors from being able to continually try or attempt to uh, add more uh, process materials. Any, any excess process materials beyond the capacity that it's capable of will just be destroyed. So you want to always try and accommodate uh, having uh, the amount of um, available launch pads um, accommodate the, email, the available amount of processors that you have. So we're, we're going to start setting up our extraction heads. Um, so we're going to make, we're going to harvest microorganisms. I think it was microorganisms. Complex? No, autotrophs. What am I not doing here? There we go. Did I set this up in the wrong place? Well, I probably did. So, I think I see what I did. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll harvest water. We need lots of water too. So we'll get a water planet going. 
So this one's going to be aqueous liquids instead of uh, instead of microorganisms. Because you need a lot of water to build a lot of things with planetary interaction. And uh, so we'll, we'll just adjust this to make, uh, to harvest water. Now, an important consideration when configuring your extractor head is that uh, the amount of time required for a processor to complete a cycle and process a resource um, can never be changed. Um, it can only be changed by using a different type of processor, but certain types of processors can only be used for uh, processing certain materials, like in this case raw materials into uh, uh, P1 level materials, or in this case aqueous liquids in the water. And uh, a basic processor has a processing time of one hour. I believe it is one hour. And um, only the amount of time that an extractor control unit um, requires to harvest material can be changed. And, you know, making your PI or planetary interaction uh, set up in factories um, manageable so that this doesn't become a job is something that's really key to try and do right and if uh, if you can see um, the the base base amount of time for ore extraction area size right uh, defaults to you know just this tiny little thing here right but uh, you know and that that'll run your program the entire time it takes to harvest uh, that amount of resource will run for one hour but it will also uh, run your extraction cycle so that it ex extracts material and deposits it into your uh, buffer storage which is essentially what the first uh, launch pad is is buffer storage um, and uh, your processors will pull from that buffer storage and export their processed materials into your export storage um, now 15 minutes is really unreasonable you don't want to be resetting this every hour uh, that would make it extremely annoying you get distracted and because the processors run a processing cycle every 30 minutes um, you know you want to have this run for a couple days and if you start getting a little further up you know into you know the extraction cycle times above one day you can see it changes to a cycle time for extraction of every 30 minutes which um, is is ideal because every 30 minutes it will extract material and every 30 minutes or, or every hour you will have more material than um, is required for your processor to run every hour however you know you want to reset it every day probably not so the ideal thing to do to approach this is to have uh, your buffer storage get a head start right have your buffer storage get a head start on your processors and processing the material that's available and uh, you know above um, above two days and three hours the extraction cycle time is every hour now that's really unoptimal you know they, they leave a lot of latitude in the design of these planetary interaction factories or CCP did to allow you to screw it up or to set it up uh, so that it's not optimal. Now you might think, well, what if I reset this every four days or every five days? Well, now it's every two hours. Um, so your extractor head will only extract material every two hours and what will happen is that for uh, 50 to 75 percent of that time your processors will just sit idle and you won't be actually processing anything right so uh, using a extraction area size that provides uh, a cycle time to extract at 30 minutes uh, we'll build up enough head start buffer storage 
to allow you uh, to keep your processors running. So there will always be material every 30 minutes, right? And the maximum amount of time that you can run 30 minute cycles on an extractor is exactly two days, one hour and 30 minutes. If you go to two days and two hours, it goes to one hour, which is suboptimal. So at, at two days, one hour and 30 minutes, um, we're gonna have a program that runs the longest and will provide the most amount of material over the course of two days, one hour and 30 minutes. This design also permits us to use all of the extraction heads without consuming more than the maximum amount of power available. And you'll only have to, to do like three, four clicks every couple of days to reset the program and potentially empty it um, somewhat infrequently. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to spread out our extraction heads as well. As I mentioned earlier, uh, trying to not uh, like Uber vacuum one resource node will uh, allow that resource node to uh, to re reheal or what's the word I'm looking for to respawn or replenish replenish um, over the course of time that you're harvesting it so uh, I should never have to move this factory considering the placement that, that I used and as you can see here too like we're uh, we're already exceeding 2,476,000 units of aqueous liquids harvested over uh, two days one hour and 30 minutes and the the amount of resource that's initially harvested will be significantly more than the processors will be able to process but as it gets further down towards the end of the program uh, it'll start running out, but you'll always typically have more over the first day and a half than the processors will require, right? So in that last half a day, um, you should typically be able to reset this and it'll keep going. Um, you won't have to rely on your extractor head being able to provide resources uh, all the time for your processors to process. You just have uh, in excess in advance by getting a head start and uh, so this this looks like a pretty good program but I think we can get a little more out of this so what we're gonna do here is try and try and place our extraction heads uh, to get uh, it's 2.5 million so that's, that's pretty good like that's 51,000 units an hour which is it's a pretty good head start, in my opinion. You know, uh, another thing to, to, to avoid doing too is to put uh, extractor heads on top of each other. As you, as you can see, if you do that, you get a negative penalty to your extractor yield on those heads, right? So keep them keep them separated. Uh, try not to astroturf your your extraction heads by putting like three or four together in a really close area because you'll deplete your resource in that general area where you have your extraction heads. So uh, you also want to try and avoid having like high peaks uh, where it's the, the extraction plan is harvesting a large amount in one cycle. Try and try and balance it out. Uh, if you do that, what you'll find is that closer to the end of your, your harvesting program, you'll have uh, more balance. Keep it, try and keep it balanced. You know, um, and, and sometimes a good necessary way to do that is to take one of your extractor heads and just find a level spot that's not in a high concentration area and use that, use that to balance out uh, the amount of resource that you'll get. So here, this one's still getting at near the end of the program in one day in 23 hours. It's still getting 50,000 50, units, but it's accumulated 2,361,000 units of aqueous liquids 
at 94 cycles. Or pardon me, no, it's getting, still getting 20,366 units, uh, which, which is pretty good. So, you know, if we move this around, like at 20,000 at, at two days in, you know, um, if we do this, we've got a high peak here at, at first, but at the end, we're only getting, we're only getting like 14,000, 12,000 units at, at one day, 23 hours, 16,000, you know, that's, that's really not optimal. And that's, uh, done as a result of, or that happens as a result of trying to not balance your, uh, extraction plan to accommodate having, that's pretty good, right? So at the end here, we're back to 23. 20,393 units at cycle 94. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and submit that. That's pretty good. This this should never deplete this entire area. There. So now we're extracting. That's that's half the battle. Um, so now now that we're extracting, what we want to do is set up our routes for the resources to have them um, stored and processed. And we're going to do is uh, we want to uh, store the raw resource that's being extracted into the first uh, launch pad right so click on the launch pad click on the uh, the products tab create root click on your first uh, launch pad or spaceport and click submit and now this uh, temperate launch pad has a route incoming for 69,792 aqueous liquids. And it'll have the first amount of that deposited in 30 minutes from now. So at um, 22, 2209 eve time, it will have uh, resources available for the processors so you, you can typically build one of these uh, within 15 to 30 minutes if you're um, experienced and understand the, the optimal way to go about approaching this and uh, by the time you finish building it well in advance of doing so you should have your processor running uh, or ready to run so now that we've got our resource routed to storage and uh, we upgraded the link because as you can see, um, the capacity that would be required to transit that amount of material um, at a un, with an unupgraded link would exceed the amount, the amount of capacity available. So that, that one, one upgraded link is the only one that, that would be necessary. So now we gotta set up our processors to um, process uh, the aqueous liquids into water and route it into storages. So to do that, you click on a processor and select the products tab, or pardon me, schematics. Click, uh, select your schematic. Now there, there's a lot of schematics here and something that's really annoying that people find is having to mouse wheel through all of these to find the one you want. And the advanced processors are worse because there's a lot more of these. Uh, to, to select through and most wheeling through them all to find the one you want can be uh, a bit of a pain in the ass after you've done it, you know, like 10, 15, 19, 20 times on one factory. But you can use um, your keyboard and letters. So I want to make water. If I, if I press W, it automatically goes to water. It'll go to, you know, the whichever letter it happens to be. Um, Right, or in this case, if I wanted to make plasmoids, right, I type PL, and it selects plasmoids according to the letter. But in this case, I want to make water. So I click the, the schematic, click install, and then what I want to do is route my resource. So we'll, we'll click on the resource that it's going to produce, 
click create root and we'll click on this first uh, click on the second pardon me second uh, spaceport there and that's done uh, rinse and repeat and as you can see what we're going to do is we're going to do one two three four of the processors into the second spaceport and then go one two three four of these processors into the third spaceport so that the output is balanced and it will, won't overfill uh, either of the processors so water press w click install create root click on your second spaceport rinse and repeat water install create root second spaceport water create root second spaceport so all of these are routed into this spaceport now we're going to route these other four into the second one and again water install second spaceport or third one pardon me uh, water install create root third spaceport water install click on it oh okay so I got a, I got an error here right I click on the this <clears throat> I was making making a route for this processor but uh, you know what happened here is I went to go make the route and create route I clicked on my export spaceport but uh, what I did is I'm getting there that says you cannot create a route is there does not appear to be sufficient transportation links to connect the facilities so I forgot to make a link and I didn't notice but that's really easy to rectify create a link click on one of the structures click submit to make the link water install click on the spaceport and the link will create or the route will will succeed being submitted <coughs> after the uh, the link was created and we've got the last one there so now all of our processes are routed to the appropriate storages and now what we have to do is route the raw resource to each of the processors. Uh, doing that, because there is no resource uh, in the storage that we want to route from, what we have to do is use this routes view, use the routes view. All right, you click on a route, and it'll show the incoming route for the raw resource. Click create route, click on your processor, create route. And just rinse and repeat for all of the eight of the processors and I find it helps just to count count like one to four one to four because you've got you know two outputs that are different for each of your groups of processors right so we're gonna do that's number two number three number four Five, six, number seven, and number eight. There we go, and we'll submit that. And that is it. That is how you set up a planetary interaction factory for harvesting raw resources and crafting it into P1 materials. This has been uh, hopefully um, beneficial to some of my, my colleagues to see just how easy this is to do. And, uh, you know, typically you can leave this running as long as you reset it every two days. Um, long enough that if you do fill up these two storages, which should take probably about a week, uh, you know, if you can't get to it, 
you also have this other storage uh, spaceport available and you can uh, once these fill up uh, transfer resources by using expedited transfers right so if I wanted to transfer say uh, 7,000 of the resource from this spaceport to this spaceport you know uh, that that's something I could do using this or I could go to the system that I'm in and I can export my resource to the planetary customs office to try and if necessary avoid having to you know get into a planetary interaction uh, collection ship and empty um, you know the, the full or processed material out and uh, typically these uh, spaceports when they are full uh, approaching 10,000 meters cubed will typically have about 20 to 23,000 units um, but uh, you know what you'll find is that uh, you can typically get away with transferring uh, five to seven thousand of a p1 resource to your input buffer storage without it becoming a detriment to your buffer storage uh, overfilling from your extractor uh, doing what it's supposed to do and uh, that'll give you a little bit of an extra uh, buffer on time to be able to keep this being manageable because this being manageable is the goal if it's a job if it's something you have to do every day you know you, it's lots of other things you can do while this is doing its thing so yeah do keep that in mind and uh, planetary interaction won't be a chore um, hopefully this has been a helpful and enlightening video and good luck with your planetary interaction